Hey everyone, uh, Andrew from Liquid Proofs here, and today's proof shot video is actually very unique. So first we're going to start with an unboxing, and we'll talk about what we're going to do. Um, I've got the pink gloves on because today we're going to need them. It's kind of funny how the first unboxing on here isn't necessarily tea related or even tea itself. Um, but let's go ahead and open this up either way. This is actually a really cool, fun looking box. Um, makes me jealous. Maybe I'll get some made for, for myself at some point. Even the inside of this is really cool. And the contents should be really small. Yep. So we'll put this to the side here. Actually, I like the smiley face. So we'll put them back there. All right, so right here, we've got something I've wanted to play around with for a while. Uh, that's Black 3.0. And if you're wondering why we have Black 3.0, I love the idea of what science can do for playing with our senses and um, in general I think this is going to be really fun for visual appearance of having something appear like a black hole. So you know, you typically get your black teaware and it's going to look something like this. Uh, the goal is that it will be as, as dark as those lines or even darker. I'm not painting this, I'm going to paint this basic little guy right here. Um, who honestly I've used a few times, but it's one of those, you know, kind of gimmick pots that come with the set. Um, either way, this is what we're going to be painting today. And the idea is that after the first coat, I can really see, um, what it looks like after just a, a bit of painting. We're going to do it on this cardboard here. And then ultimately I could put it next to other teapots and the idea would be in photos, it can almost look like a black hole or just in general be really fun for people to hold. Plus, I don't know how often uh, anybody gets to interact with um, Black 2.0, Vanta Black, Black 3.0, any of these things. And so the the real like, goal would be that I have additional and extra of this stuff when I'm done. If I use the whole thing on this, I'm gonna be a little disappointed here. So I don't paint too much. Hopefully this can come off and I can just put my brush in there. Yep. Well, it's it's pretty dark in there as you can imagine so since I'm doing the whole pot just a basic uh, brush here and this is going to be some odd content I clean this off pretty well what I did is I used um, a few different methods of cleaning it because there are some stains on here but ultimately based off of the material that it has with the clay it should probably take a few coats so this will end up needing um, probably a few videos so what I'll do is probably just get this guy right here painted really well. Um, maybe not the most smoothest coat originally, and then I'll come back over it again. I think it's gonna need, from looking at this, from what's gonna stick. Um, and this is just to start out, that's like no time at all. You can see it'll stick on there. It's probably gonna need a few coats. I'm not going very thick, so let's try going thicker here. Yeah, it's gonna need multiple coats though for sure. So we'll end up um, probably doing, I don't know, it's not using that much. I'll probably end up doing at least three coats on this. I want to get this guy as dark and as black as possible so that when people come over for a tea party, I can show them like, hey, check this out. This is Black 3.0. Because um, I've always wanted to see what Black 3.0 looks like in person. So if I can, you know, involve that into a tea gathering, with a teapot that we won't use, uh, I think that'll be really fun, especially if it's something that's handheld, something people can visually look at. And then, you know, at some point, I'll be able to use this um, for kind of like an art piece, you know? Uh, against all my other teapots, this will look really, really fun. And I might be able to find one the same size, put it in front of it, and show that contrast uh, within certain photos. And then it'll be fun just to see what it looks like in the light outside, you know, as it's supposed to absorb the majority of the light. So I could tell already, um, this this happens, this is pretty quick, it's not that hard. What's gonna be hard is getting the pieces that I would typically hold. So we'll put this first coat on here. Um, there's a lot of spots that really don't wanna absorb it yet. And that's okay. We will come back around with it. Oh, I gotta get in the spout too. I've got a finer brush as well. Um, and then depending on how much I use here, is what's going to help me determine do I want to actually paint the inside 
you know, as for something that, you know, people will potentially hold. Um, and we'll find out about that. So got to do the lid as well. It would be really strange to not have the lid blacked out as well. So this stuff definitely doesn't want to stick on completely. Uh, it's kind of leaving that surface. So if you watch right there, it wants to kind of not stick 100%. That's okay. We're going to go over this. And I think if I could get it to go over it completely, I won't have to worry about the overall look because it'll have enough on there to kind of coat it and give it that appearance. Oh yeah, see, look, right there. You just gotta, I gotta take my time is what I gotta do. Get like more of a concentration on there. But yeah, so this is how it's gonna go. I'm gonna end up needing to go over this quite a few times it looks like. Yeah, and I'm going to have to practice my brushing strokes, but this will be uh, day one. We'll finish the first coat, come back, see what it looks like, and then I'll show you guys when it's dry. Then we'll do a second coat. I would assume we're going to do a third coat as well. But yeah, if you guys think this is crazy, um, that's okay. I'm, I'm really excited, and we'll see what it looks like. Actually, I got no paint on me. We'll see what it's going to look like compared to that. I can already tell depending how this dries off. I don't think it should be glossy, but I don't know. So, and I've got a few other black tea wear pieces as well. So I'll go ahead and finish this and then we'll go into uh, the dry, the drying of the first coat onto the second and third one. So before the, the first coat even finished drying, um, I'm finding that if I get kind of globs and let it do its thing, I can actually get it to get a little bit more soaked on there before it dries. So we're actually applying a little bit more um, in the video, you could see it looks pretty spotty, uh, but I could tell you in person. Oh, look, I already missed the piece, but I could tell you in person um, where it's sticking, uh, how dark it gets is, is pretty enjoyable. So if it could take off that glimmer and that shine, I think this is going to be pretty darn sweet looking. But yeah, this is, this is actually kind of, this is kind of fun slowing down and just like watching it um, and then looking at it. It's, it's, it's pretty, I don't know. I mean, it's. I mean, when you look into it, there's like, when the light's not showing any reflection, it's, it's fun. It's, uh, it's pretty cool with the brain. All right, so unfortunately, uh, as it's getting later, looking at this, it's not turning out as it should. So what I'm going to do is just put a, a decent coat here on the top without a glove. And I'm going to try to use that to kind of paint around this. And then hope that in the morning um, it dries pretty well because I don't know if this is actually going to work or not. The idea itself, um, you know, is really great. It's, it's fun. It's exciting. But I don't know if it's going to stick to the clay that I'm wanting it to. And it might just be because it's the first coat. Um, I'm not sure. But I want to at least get a thicker amount on here. And I mean, it's dry now, um, but as you can see on there, it looks pretty ugly. So we're going to try, it's slightly coming off to the touch here, we're going to try to get a stronger coat on here that I'm going to do off camera and really take some time. As you can see, I'm blotting it. It's going to be a lot more time consuming to actually get it covered and then even it out like this right here. I got to smooth that out. Which I don't know if you could see that on the camera. But right there, I just scraped off just too much. So this stuff's a little finicky on the material that I'm putting it on. But I think once I get it there, if it sticks as a showpiece, like even from the darkness of this, it is darker than like charcoal itself, which is extremely exciting because on the paper here, or the cardboard, I mean, looking at it, and it's dry, it's it's just very dark. Like it there's no light that can reflect off of it like you would normally see when there's light in the area. So I'm hoping this will work because I'm seeing what the potential can be um, when it's actually there and how dark it can get. Um, but we'll have more updates tomorrow. So this will be a multi, multi-day uh, progress, not progress, uh, project. There's a smiley face on the back up here too. Anyways, all right, more updates later. All right, everyone. So we've got the first coat really done um after last night uh, you know about 
we're going to call it about 16 hours later, I'm able to get to it again. I will say, uh, originally when I was doing this, that first coat, I didn't know if it was going to make it. Now, the inside still needs to be redone. This is just one coat on here, um, and you can see how dark it looks, and then the lid I'm going to finish up as well. So here's what's been really, really, uh, really interesting to me. This is my black Kyusu. And when I put it here, um, there's a stark difference. It starts to look brown in real life. So I'm going to move the camera and I'm going to show you a little bit more um, focused in on this before we do the next coating. So we're here now and I just wanted to show you, you know, how dark this truly is. You can see the inside. There is a need to continue to fill that out. The bottom, because of how it rests on here, I will have to smooth out again. So I'm going to do a full coat. There's pieces here, here, where it kind of runs off a little bit. Um, and then there are very small little specks where it didn't stick. So somewhere on this lid, like right there, for example. So what I'll do is I'll finish that. And then eventually, as it sits on there, it is going to be a completely black to contrast against what would be a typical pot. So I'll grab a white one. Now, this isn't really all that cleaned off, um, but it's going to be really fun just to kind of do the contrasting of these because this is the pure black at this point again like I was saying when you start to compare you know this black Kyusu to this it almost looks in person I know it's really hard to tell here that it's brown and I'm gonna clean this up so get a little bit of a closer view as I paint this here so in this case you get my black 3.0 take this off so last night um, I finished it this way so now I'm gonna leave it this way I'm gonna do it one way with it this way one way that way I'm gonna finish up this this is extremely hard because you have to kind of hold it like that when I'm painting it but it's very doable I found that this method's pretty simple too I'm just gonna put some drops there and then I'll come uh, smooth it out same here stuff is extremely dark and it's fun because like there's enough in here I get to play around with. Like for the project that I'm doing, it doesn't use up all that much, right? So we just want to get a nice smooth coat going. Now that the first coat's really stuck on there, and I'm just going to go ahead and take it across the whole thing essentially. I'll spread it out. There's a few places where it kind of like gathered and globbed up, I'll say. And I'll be able to smooth that out as well. But when you touch it, it's not going to feel all that pleasant in the hand. Um, I think that's just due to the coarseness of when something's painted like this. But what I will say is the darkness of it is very, very apparent. Um, and that's, you know, the ultimate goal of what this is, is a visual, is a visual thing. And I can't tell you guys how relieved I was at the end of last night seeing that it was starting to stick. Because in the beginning of it, I really did not think this was going to work. And I thought I was going to end up having to post my first L of a video, uh, which almost happened. Thankfully, it didn't. This is what I was talking about on this. This is extremely hard. I kind of have to hold it like this. This part's the easiest once you get it because um, the surface area of it is super simple. But the goal would be once you pick this up, it'll just be completely dark. So this one I'm going to have to do the lid like this and then later to finish it I'll have to put it upside down and do the inside uh, I was thinking about it originally like I was like oh, it doesn't have to be completely black but then I was like no I think for the contrast if I ever do any kind of photos or anything I want the entire thing to be blacked out so very simple just smoothing it around Yesterday's was a disaster, but I think as I've used it a little bit more, I understand how this works. As somebody who doesn't work with paint very often, or know the type of stuff that I'm painting on, uh, I think it'll help out. So that's that's the lid, and then I'm going to have to get more here. And I will go ahead and continue this. The inside is the tricky part because 
I'm not sure how you paint the inside of a teapot if you ever have to. I would assume, you know, glaze, you kind of just dip it in, I'm guessing. I don't know. Uh, but it is, it's not easy. That part I found out. But yeah, it's kind of interesting how it comes over, you know, gloss-like. But look how dark that is. I'm extremely excited to, you know, after um, this coat, then I'll do the one with it upside down to show you guys the, the final product there. And then eventually it'll end up on... Uh, Instagram with photos, all kinds of stuff. I might even do a stupid brew in it, even though I, would, I wouldn't drink out of it. Uh, but it might be fun just to kind of do, to see how liquid's coming out of an object that's, you know, as dark as this. But yeah, so it's coming along. I don't know why I keep touching it with this, but oh, I have the glove on. So either way, that's where we're at. I'm actually much gladder now, much happier. See in there, it's actually pretty dark. It's almost like a black hole and I still have to get it darker. But I'm glad how it's turning out. So I'm gonna continue to finish this up and then uh, we'll see what it looks like at the end. Well everyone, it's been a few days and just like that, we've got the final layers of paint on this. Um, but there's some things to talk about. First of all, I think the object that I chose um, for myself works very well. As you could tell, it's very dark. We're gonna get some close-ups. I wanna show you some problems that I ran into. Uh, but what's really fun, is the contrasting of white versus black here is very apparent. Whereas, you know, if we take a black teapot in general, so this Kyusu here, and you do a gradient, you could see a wild difference. Um, especially the way that light reflects off, it's going to give that, but you would still know this is a dark pot. So, that being said, putting this on a shelf is going to be quite, uh, I, I think, beautiful. It'll be fun to show people, but I kind of wanted to pull the camera close and show you uh, what I'm talking about here. So as we get a little bit closer, I'll point this down. Looking at this pot, and what's wild is I'm not sure what's going on with all of this, and, it, and I've got the camera really focused in. But those spots of white, I haven't figured out what they're coming from. You know, as I rub this, I haven't figured out where they're coming from, what it is, or what's going on. But I do know whenever I paint the layer, it's extremely dark. Now, that's up close. You know, as you pull away, and you look at it. You know, so in the case of like this, it's sitting on a shelf. This object is going to look extremely dark and black. Almost edited in some senses when you see it. Very beautiful. I absolutely love this. Uh, I just don't think it's the texture or the material needed for this to apply completely. So if anybody knows what might be going on here, you know, with, with the whiteness, uh, I would highly appreciate it because I still have plenty of this paint left. I would like to continue to figure it out. That way I can finish this. Uh, either way, putting it aside um, to see it, I think, is, is beautiful. So what I'll do is I'll go put it somewhere, and I will show you. Now, excuse me as I control this myself here. So in my living room, you know, I've got a place where I've got my manga set up. And right here with this pot, if we were to step back, it, it almost looks as if it's just taken out of that area, right? Completely black. As we get closer, that's when you're able to find those imperfections. Once I can figure that out, that'll be really nice. But against that white background there with the wood or fall wood, uh, really, really beautiful in terms of what I'm able to do with the contrast. So, and I can even put that up to things that are colored. Again, sorry for all the shakiness here. So with that right there, uh, I mean, it's, it's completely black, which is, you know, what I wanted. Uh, it's quite beautiful. So we take that against, let's try Goku's hair here. Can you see the difference? Yeah, so there's there's literally no light reflecting off of that teapot. So you could see it back there. But again, so if anybody knows how to get rid of those white lines, let me know. Other than that, that's the ridiculousness of this video.